And before I introduce our talk leader um, tonight, or tonight's talk leader, uh, I'd like to thank founder.org. James Murray, he said, could, could you stand up? Uh, representing founder.org. It's a Silicon Valley based um, organization, and they are providing us with some food <laughs> and drinks. <laughs> After the, after the talk, right there. Um, thank you. And then our um, speaker tonight, Evon Söderlund. Uh, could, could you join me? Yeah, sure. Um, Evon is an amazing uh, young entrepreneur um, uh, who actually a great example of a, a, a person who started her company right after the, her studies or, 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 or during the studies. Uh, I don't say that that fits everyone, you know, but, you know, in some cases it, it works. It hasn't been easy at all, right? Mm. Maybe I think you will be sharing your experience. Yeah. Uh, excellent. And, and the, uh, but it's, it's a great story. It's a great example and, and very encouraging one. Um, so you founded the company in 2012. And you actually you graduated. Um, actually, you were majoring in entrepreneurship, right? And your thesis was on uh, blue ocean strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And then you founded your company called Huone, the first events hotel in the world. A new concept. I, I think you will be telling more about that. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, I was there on Friday yeah. <laughs> at Huone in Merkasari. Uh, actually, one of the companies I'm involved in, we, we had a, a session there in the ele electro room. What, what, what was it called? Yeah, electro. electro. Yeah. Yeah. It says, think big on the wall there. Uh, um, it was really nice. I mean, really, really amazing place. And, Thank you. And very busy. Yeah. A lot of people, actually. <laughs> Good, yeah. good that you are there in one of those busy times. <laughs> yeah. And then you've been awarded also. You've been awarded Restonomy. Yeah. I don't know what that is in English. But... Yeah, me neither. <laughs> yeah. And then the PwC Most Valuable Entrepreneur in 2014. Thank you for coming and sharing your story with us. It's nice to be here. And let's give a big hand to everyone. Hi guys, um, before I, I start, I need to make up a little bit excuse because as you can see, I'm not very well. Um, I flew in this morning at 7 from Singapore and uh, I have been having 39 degrees uh, fever for three days. But my doctor advised me that if I must make it to this speech, then take one gram of Panadol and 800 milligram of Burana, which I did. So I hope that helps, and let's see how long that lasts me, okay? <laughs> I didn't want to cancel. <laughs> I didn't want to cancel because I knew that you guys were coming here today. So I hope I'm not sucking your energy, but actually giving you energy, all right? So my name is Yvonne, like uh, Oli says. Um, I have been an entrepreneur since 2012. And now we are in 2016, oh God, how time flies. And uh, that, that means that I have been an entrepreneur already for four years and I'm still loving it. But uh, I don't have a lot of big lesson to share with you guys, really. Uh, so I would just kind of like to tell you my story. And from there, if you can pick up anything that you can learn from, then great. But if not, then just listen just like a friend's story, that you get to know somebody and that you get to know me, all right? So I'm a Malaysian. Uh, I'm actually Malaysian Chinese. My mother tongue is Chinese. Uh, when, ever since I was uh, three years old, uh, I was raised by my grandmother. My father and my uh, mother, by the way, my father is uh, in the crowd today. 
this is his first time uh, outside anywhere of Malaysia. So I, I took him with me this morning to come to, uh, to come to Finland. So here he is, and he has never stepped food in any other country than Malaysia. And it was very fun explaining to the, to the immigration office that he doesn't know what to do. Just let him pass. He's with me, please. <laughs> right. Anyway, so my father and my mother uh, had to go and search for their living. And we come from a village. So it wasn't very uh, good life back then. So when my grandmother raised me in that village, uh, you know, he would, she would teach us how to, you know, hand wash the clothes, get water from the well, and, you know, and uh, to cook and to collect the eggs from the chicken and so on. So one of my favorite things to do actually growing up is to squat next to the basket where the hen is uh, having the eggs there. And then when the hen go away, then I'll go and steal the eggs and then run to my grandmother and say, look, 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 I got eggs. Um, so this kind of humble uh, time from the village uh, does mean that you don't have a lot of things. Like you don't have made toys. You don't have, um, you know, the train that you guys are building. We don't have train. We had rocks and then we just tried to, you know, make out of some game with those sand and rocks and so on. So when you don't have a lot, you start to get very creative. Because if I would give you, you know, five million euros to start your company, I'm sure you will have a lot of ways to spend it. But if I only give you five, uh, 500 euros to start your company, then I guess you have to get very, very creative, right? So I kind of feel that my creativity started when I was a child because I didn't have a lot. And that also made me really appreciate what I have now. You know, my grandmother raised me uh, in a very, very traditional way. The way how she raised my mother. She always tells me this one rule to live by and all female listen up. The ultimate success for a woman is to marry rich. <laughs> to have as many children as possible. And to be the beautiful wife who can cook, who can clean, and teach the children. Higher education is not that important. Because you anyway get married and stay home and look after the kids anyway. So as long as you can read and write, it's enough. You don't need higher education. So that's how I was raised well, since I was small. You know, living in the village, I also didn't kind of think that I could do any more than what my family have done. My uncles, they deliver newspaper, and my aunt work in the factory sewing clothes. Uh, none of them got high education. I think the highest education was my mother, and she left school when she was 15. So I didn't know what is outside that world. I didn't know any of my family member who would work in an office, who would actually know how to write a proper letter. None. And growing up, I didn't really think that I could become anything else than what my family um, has become. But then I found this one thing that I really, really love, dancing. I love dancing. It allows you to tell a story without saying anything and use your body to tell the story. And I realized that when I train very hard, I am very good at it. So I found my passion in dancing. Was I mad at my mom and dad to kind of abandon us to my grandmother in the village? Yes, I was. Was I happy as a child? Yes, I was. But at the same time, I realized that I decide whether I'm happy or not. I became a professional dancer 
when I was 18. My family couldn't afford me to go to the college, nor they were willing to give me money to study dance. Uh, not that we have it. And um, I worked so hard that I became a professional dancer by the time I was 18. What does a professional dancer do? You dance Monday to Friday, eight hours a day, train for the performance that you are going to be performing on Saturday and Sunday. I was living the dream of my life until another family drama came uh, and also until the dance company got dismissed. So I was out of a job and in the middle of another family drama. Many people asked me, why did I come to Finland? I was 19, I didn't have money, I had 500 euro in my pocket. How did I come to Finland? Someone who had never been anywhere, someone whose family who have never been anywhere. I was not brave, as you may think. I was scared. I was running away like a coward because I had so much problem to deal with when I was in Malaysia. I wanted to go away. I believe that there is hope outside Malaysia, that there's something better. Did I know what it was? No. But I went anyway. It was a very big risk that I took. In a way, it's funny that today, now I mentioned this story because when I explained to my dad from the, from the Helsinki Vanta airports towards our home in the, in the car, I said to him that, isn't it weird? Do you realize that this is the city of Finland and there's no skyscraper? And I said that that is, oh my God, the way how I felt when I first came to Finland, the first thing when I was in the car coming out and I was like, aren't we in a technology country? Like, where are all the skyscraper? And there's like nothing. So I had this deja vu feeling today, having my dad also coming, coming experience the same thing. Anyway, so I came not to Finland, but to East Europe. I wanted to be someone's dance trainee. I figured that if I try hard enough, someone would let me dance for free. And at least I can do some kind of odd jobs to support myself. Naively enough, that is what I went on to try. I was in Austria, I was in, I was in um, Hungary, and I quickly realized that I don't fit in. First, language. Second, the dancer in the group dance go like this. And that's me. So it doesn't really fit. So at the end, I realized that maybe I should go to London. London speak English, even though my English back then wasn't that good. And one thing linked to another, I fell in love with musical theater. Oh God, musical theater is such an amazing art. And I auditioned for the London uh, Musical Theater School. I got in, but I did not get the scholarship. So I couldn't study there. And now, interesting, I met this one guy back in Malaysia before I even fly to uh, Europe. His name is Yussi. And he told me that, hey, you are in London. Come and uh, visit me and auntie in Finland. Like, you know, we can show you around since you're anyway waiting for the result of your school. And I was like, sure, I don't have that much money left. So can I stay, stay with you guys? Sure, and then I went and stayed in his whole ass apartment. And boom, three months later, he was there on one knee proposing to me. <laughs> and naively enough, I said yes. <laughs> and uh, last year was our 10 years wedding anniversary. And now we have a two year old still happily married, in case you, you are wondering. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Guys, this is a tip for you. Three months proposing to your girlfriend might not be a bad idea after all. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, there I was, kind of giving up my dream as a dancer because I realized that if I were to dance in Finland and I was looking for jobs as a dancer and there was no Chinese uh, contemporary that I wanted to learn, there is no Chinese modern that I wanted to learn. So if I were to earn a living dancing, I would have to wear that short. So mm, not going to really do that. So there I was not really good at speaking English, and a foreigner who is marrying a Finn <sighs> with a high school certificate. I didn't really have a lot of choices of job opening. So I got a job as a Chinese uh, restaurant waiter. Uh, just when I was about to go to work there, the embassy of Malaysia opened up, and they needed a Malaysian to work there. Aha! Guess 10 years ago, how many Malaysian is there in Helsinki? Not so many. You can calculate even with your one hand. So there I was in that very door and begging for the job from the ambassador. And I didn't have anything. I only have a high school certificate. So I went there and I begged and I begged. I cried and then I promised that I will be the hardest working worker you will ever seen. And you know, Men, they can't take when women is crying. So I got the job. <sighs> and three months later, he made me his uh, social secretary to organize his events, or the National Day reception, or the culture show, and so on. So I was the hardest working person in that embassy at the end. But still, when the ambassador left, because the ambassador, they, they rotate, so when he left for Bahrain, I felt like my debt to him was paid. That, uh, that I thank him for taking me and for teaching me everything I knew. But there I was, uh, 24 years old, 23, 23 years old, um, having worked in embassy for almost three years. And I look around the street of Alexander and Gato, and I realize that, my God, the whole street are filled with people who are degree holders, master degree holders, doctorate, and me, high school certificate. How am I supposed to gain a living ever in Helsinki as a foreigner? So there I was thinking that maybe it's time that I go to study, but what? Okay, there was this one incident when my husband and I got married. Uh, he's from Rovaniemi. I know they are very irresistible and uh, they so a group of the family came to Malaysia when we had a Chinese uh, wedding so you know it's, it's for my family losing face if I marry and did not have a big reception in a village in fact the reception was 300 people that I did not know who they are and uh, my mother did a very good job in inviting everyone in the village. And, uh, and then there was this ten, Rovaniemi, <laughs> Lapilainen there. <laughs> and uh, you know, language really a big problem. So at the end, we realized that, uh, hey, maybe, maybe we should you know, introduce my family and Yusuf's family uh, before we go to the reception, right? At least they meet once before. So we organized so that they will meet in this one place called Karaoke Box. Have you, anyone heard of Karaoke Box or KTV? Okay, good. So it's this room after room after room after room of karaoke. So what you do there, you book a room, you go inside and then you sing your heart out. <laughs> And there's like a lot of songs for, for you to choose from and you get like food, drinks, everything in, in your room. So it was brilliant. You should throw the question immediately when he realized that it was only like five minutes in and my mother was already dancing with Yusi's dad, Besa Mucho and stuff like that. And then the lapi liner was like fighting over the might about my, I did it my way or blah. So Yusi was like, hey, how come we don't have this in Finland? 
This will solve so much trouble, you know. How you guys go to party? Oh my God, the Finnish people party. First, you clean the house, then you make food. Oh, sorry, scratch that. You put out the candies and chips. You don't actually serve food for people. I know that, <laughs> and uh, and people need to bring their own drinks, and. Uh, after that, when you are actually having a good time, you know, like until ten, eleven, then what happened? Oh, we are having such a good time. Let's everyone go to the city, and then then everyone take the train, go to the city, and then in the middle of the train station, then you decide that. So where are we going? And nobody know where are they going. And at the end, oh, I don't want to go to you know Sadu's place. And then then group split. And then another group goes somewhere, queue outside in minus 20 degree outside the club, trying to beg the bouncer to let you in. Oh my God, why are you guys like this? And then going in, paying 10 euro for the entrance fee, leaving your jacket, paying another five, and then go get to the club, and then you squeeze like a sardine can to try to get a long get all. And then, then you're like, wait a minute, where are all my friends? <laughs> And you're calling your friends and nobody answers because they don't hear you. Okay, that is not how you party. I'm sorry. So I thought, hey, if we bring the karaoke box here, right? You get the place, you don't have to clean, you don't have to clean when you're in hangover the next day, you won't find any wine stain in your sofa, you know, you go, go to a place, everything is there. Everyone pay for their own thing. And then everyone have fun dancing, singing, you know, having fun. Why not? So, there come the genius part. Then I decided that because I have this idea of bringing the karaoke box to Finland, that I would study hospitality management. Great idea. So, three and a half years of my study, I went through every subject, say marketing. Okay, how should I brand this karaoke box in Finland? And say social media campaign, how should I make sure that people find out about us? HR, how do I retain the people who work in our place? So every subject that I sit in class, I had a back of my head that karaoke box idea. And the genius thing is that because you have a motivation of your own agenda, that you wanted to have this one idea. So you all the time actually polish it when you are in a class. And at the end, three and a half years later, I end up being the number one in my class. In fact, I got the scholarship. In fact, I got the best business plan awarded by housing in Urit there just by polishing that every time when I was in the class because I had my own agenda, why I want to learn that subject. And I graduated with the business plan, not called Karaoke Box Finland, Call Huona Events Hotel. I realized that I can't have Karaoke Box Finland because you Finns love to sing karaoke, but you only sing karaoke kannissa, <laughs> which means when you're drunk. So drunk customer, not good customer. So I decided that that is scratch out. But still, there I was, 2012, Graduated, a business plan in my hand, look like this, 28 years old. By the way, look like this mean, meaning that I have no brain. And I'm an immigrant, a woman who don't speak Finnish, go to banks, knock, knock. I need 800,000 to build this. Can you loan me this money? Bonk. <laughs> and then another time, and then another time, and then another time. Every time when I go to talk to the bank, they ask me this one question. Where is your reali vacus collateral? You see, it was 2012, right after the financial crisis, and people are still recovering. They are very tight with their wallet. Nobody wants to invest in an idea that has not been done before. You don't have track records. You don't have another company who have done similar things. I am one very stubborn lady. 
when I get rejected, I go home to cry, but then I'll come back again to ask for the same thing until I get it. So, this one bank manager asked me that uh, you don't have rare alivacus, you will not get this anywhere. Why are you still, you know, trying so hard? Then I was like, I don't understand when you guys say to me that I don't have rare alivacus because I have bought this apartment six years ago. I've been paying for it six years. Why can't my apartment be a rare alivacus? And he said that because you still have the loan to pay. Then I was like, but if I sell the house today, you know, the value has ri uh, risen, then I will get, you know, X amount of money. Isn't that really Bakus? And he said, that, no, because you already have the loan and you're still living in the house. Then I was like, fine. Then I was like this, you know, very like, I was like, fine. Then I will sell the house. And I sold the house. It was not this easy. That day when we have to move, I was uh, in the corner, not helping you see to pack, uh, crying, because I said to him that that oven is the oven that I threw away maybe 10 cakes because the cake didn't rise. I have never baked cake before, you know, Asian, not very good at baking. And I said that balcony is the balcony that I try to grow the balcony strawberries to prove your mother wrong, that you can actually grow strawberries in your balcony. And six years of the memory of how I came to Finland and everything that I know as home, the only place that I, felt I feel safe, I had to give that away. I was just crying there and you see had to kick me away to the rental apartment because he said that I'm not helping. <laughs> and you know, when you sell your home, everything you have, there's this one thing that you do when you talk to anyone who would just listen. Which by the way, when you have a business idea, talk to somebody. Don't think that people were going to copy your idea because they won't. And only by talking to them, you know you get to challenge back to your own view. You get to better the idea. And that's what I did. I talked to one person, and if that person is not willing to invest or not interested, then I asked him, that, do you know somebody who might? That is how networking goes. And you know what? When I sold my apartment, uh, apartment I proved one thing to the investor, that I am willing to give up everything that I have for this. And that is how serious I am. And because of that move, I actually got investor. But you know, we didn't get her enough money. It was 800,000 that I needed, right? And I got a little bit over half a million with my apartment so, And then on top of that, took more loans. We built the place, uh, we built the place and during the renovation period um, there was an incident where the design went wrong and the contractor came to tell me that um, there's a 350,000 extra cost that you need to pay in two weeks and if you don't we have to stop the project. And we were one month into building the place and I was there staring at him, wondering that where am I supposed to find 350,000? And I did. And don't ask me why and how. Vague memory in all this. And you would thought that everything actually go better but you see, I had to jeopardize my working capital because of that. So by, by November 2012, the Huane Events Hotel, the world first events hotel, was ready. It was beautiful. But nobody knows about it. I did not have any resources. 
to tell people that, hey, we exist, we have no sales, we have no marketing. And you know events, people don't book their events tomorrow, today. They book their events next, uh, next month event today. So when the first month you have no customer, that means you will not have customer for the next two months. Things got worse. Three months into running the place, I got pregnant. Which, by the way, is highly not recommended. <laughs> I literally woke up in the rental apartment that I told you about, wondering, where's my period? And then went to the toilet and saw two lines. And then I had my hand shake, I walked to the room, and then I woke you sit up, and I was like, Han? Han? There's two lines in this stick. And then Yusi's reaction was brilliant. He paused for one second, and then he said, Damn, that is Pikuyolu season. <laughs> Yeah, that is going to stick to him forever. <laughs> and uh, my tummy grew bigger and bigger, and I had to be the cleaner, the chef, the waiter, the CEO, the secretary, the finance controller, everything. And you know how you are serving you know, food and then collecting plates, and then sometimes I go, Excuse me, and then the guys go back a bit, and I was like, "Excuse me," and then then he's like, "Ah," because my dummy was that huge, and I was still collecting plates. That is when you are an entrepreneur; you have no maternity leave. In fact, when I give birth to baby, the very same day, because my baby was born on the thirtieth of October, I had to, when, I, when they pushed me and woke me up, because I had a C-section, uh, I said that, today is the 30th, someone get me a laptop, I need to pay salaries. <laughs> and I was there, seriously, trying to breastfeed my baby at the same time, and at the same time trying to pay, pay salary, because it's the last day of the, of, the, of the month. It hasn't been easy. And like I said, the first year when we couldn't pay rent, when we couldn't, you know, at one point we couldn't even pay salary. You know, could not pay salary is probably my worst nightmare because I know that my team have worked so hard with us that what if they cannot pay their rent because I cannot pay their salary? And that is my worst nightmare. And there was this one month that we couldn't pay. And Yusi had to call his dad, uh, and they are already um, in pension, to borrow their pension money to pay salaries. And that is as, as hard and as it gets at times. And we got into a very nasty case with this one partner of ours. Uh, namely, actually, the contract, construction company. They took us to court, sued us to bankruptcy. And there I was, holding my three months old baby, waiting three hours in Karaya Oi Girls in the court to wait whether or not the judge will say that are we bankrupt. I was so scared because they were speaking in Finnish and in court language and I did not understand what was going on, but I could not defend myself because I don't understand the court language. And thank God the judge said no, that we are not bankrupt. But the same guy sued us again in October two years ago to hobby our girls. And it was again denied. But when I was sitting there in the court, 
I realized that if UCI and I are bankrupt, it's not just <coughs> me bankrupt, UC bankrupt. It's also our three months old baby. That, that means I can never afford to go home again because there is 600,000 euro on my name. Sometimes life is very, very funny. When you hit bottom, there's only one way to go. Up. The same day when, my, when I received the email that see you in court, was the very same day when Mika Makelein and the author of Taivas and Helvet, the Heaven and Hell book, called me and said that there has been a few people who nominated you and your story to be featured in the book. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? Because that was the same day when I got see you in court that you are going to be sued bankrupt. In fact, if you have read the book, you will understand that my story was more hell than, than heaven. So I, I think he wanted my story to be in there because he wanted more hell inside. <laughs> anyway, at that time, I couldn't disclose the court case because it was still going on. That's why the, the bankruptcy case wasn't mentioned in the story. But nowadays, when I go and speak, I'm also using a title that from bankruptcy to expansion all in a year. Because the second time when I was to bankruptcy was October, and last year in November, we expanded Huana three times in size. Today, even though a lot has gone by, by and a lot of ups and downs and tears and blood and sweat, argument, losing friends, gaining new friends. If you ask me that, will I do it all over again? Hell yeah. I don't regret anything, even with the partner. It's just a hard lesson that I will learn. I'm sure in the future I'll get even nastier people coming in my way. But today, Huana has been three years old, and we have hosted more than 3,000 events and won five awards. And just three months ago, we expanded Huonet three times in size. And the reason why I have been traveling to Singapore so much is also because we are opening one in Singapore. So if... <laughs> if I can do it, Coming from nothing, every one of you here can do it, if not better. And I don't have magic powers, I'm not a superhuman, and, uh, but I have one thing that I, that I want to say before I show you the video. Um, be humble. Be humble not by the Finnish determination of uh, humble. You know, the Finnish humble is that, nah, we are not good, nah, I'm not that good, you know, yeah. Not that humble. Uh, the humble meaning that you are good, good. You can do well, good. But keep learning because you are never good enough. You can always improve, you can always learn. So even though we have gotten a lot of good feedback and good reputation, but I still want to learn. I still say that, please tell me more. Please share with me your experience elsewhere that you have seen. Like, I want to learn, I want to get better. And you know the word in Finnish, the literal, the literal translation of the person who try. Uh, a lot of Finnish people don't like the word because try, why do you call us try? We, we are doing too, we are not just trying. But I actually love the word Uritte because we are trier. We try harder. We try because we don't know, even though we don't know what is the outcome of trying, we might succeed or we might fail. We try anyway. 
But after we fail, we still stand back up and we try harder. And that's why I love call, calling myself Gova Yurit there because I try harder. And uh, because of that uh, try harder uh, motto that I'm trying to live by, I guess you guys are also curious about what Huane is. Okay, so I'm going to show you a music video. Uh, the name of the song is called Try Harder. And uh, it's written by me and, my, and a friend of mine, uh, the song. And uh, inside the song, it features Huane. So it's being filmed in Huane. So you get to see how Huane is with this. It's a room, a space, we're breathing air. It's a life, a dream, it's love to share. A birth, a need, inside out. It's a silent whisper, yet to shout. I wonder why, why be so, so serious? I wanna show, show. Excuse my acting. <laughs> Still continue. We take some questions. Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so that was a video that we did um, because we expanded the space and we wanted to feature the space. But I figured that you know, whenever people watch uh, company intro video, it always lasts. 
you know, and a minute, but then your, your attention span is like 30 seconds and you're like, oh, it's about this company and stuff, you know? So I was like, then why people watch, you know, Alicia Keys song, Adele song, and you can last that whole three and a half minutes by watching it? Then I was like, hey, I will make a song about Huan, eh? And then, then people will watch that three and a half minutes without stopping. And that's why we did this in three weeks from idea to execution, everything in three weeks. And um, the singer is actually my sister. She's also um, our chef in Huan. Eh? Uh, and uh, the, the rapper is our investor, actually. He's also here. <laughs> he's, he's not a rapper. <laughs> he, he's not a rapper by profession, but, but I think he got potential. And uh, at the end of the video, as you saw, the, the people who were dancing, they were all uh, my employees, my team. So th this, is a, this is really like a music video of the uh, CEO goofing around, uh, the investor rapping, and uh, the chef singing, and the entire company dancing. So we had a lot of fun doing that, and I hope you had fun watching as well. But uh, so that was Juana. And, um, I don't know if you guys have a question, and I, and I hope I haven't bored you for the last 45 minutes. And I hope I haven't sucked your energy with my sickness. So if you have learned anything, I'm very, very grateful. And if you have a question, I'm more than happy to take them. Oh, yes, we have. Yes. You might not be a superhuman, but you are a star, <laughs> a rock star, Don't say a, a, humble, a humble rock star, right? And a kova yrittäjä. Yes, right? kova yrittäjä. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank Let's you. give a big hand again. Thank you. Uh, we have some minutes left. Any questions? The, you know. This is very, this is how this you is know very you typical Finland. Finland. Yeah, 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 I know. Okay, so what's next? Right. <laughs> what's your next dream that you're gonna fulfill after Singapore? Uh, our idea is that because <clears throat> our, our motto is to make business events fun, because we believe that uh, when people meet at business uh, function, because you work every day, you know the the eight hours going to the office and so on. So when you actually meet and have a team meeting, team training, a seminar. It's very important. Those are the ones that you actually create new things. And why should it happen then in a boring meeting room? It shouldn't. And that's why we try to make those fun. And uh, in fact, I don't know if you guys realize, we have swings there in Huana, and we are also having a terrace that is coming now uh, in, uh, in two months, and there's a slide to go to the terrace and I'd love to see, for example, Oli in his business suit and slide down to the to the to the Actually I you know terrace. I was there on Friday and it's it's an amazing place. I have a question. I mean can can we actually can people come and visit and see the place? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. it's a just it's like a, that. Yeah it's a hotel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I so. mean we call it a hotel but we don't have bedrooms. All our rooms are events rooms. And uh, uh my motto is to actually make working fun and work uh, especially in business events fun and that shouldn't stop here uh, that should contage the world and that's why now in Helsinki then after that in Singapore and after Singapore sky's the limit because then we will just franchise the idea forward mm -hmm. and uh, we already have interest in several city uh, from Europe so it's all about doing it with your heart. Um, I also want to uh, share this one other thing that uh, when you become an entrepreneur, remember why you want to become an entrepreneur. If it's because of money, stop right now. Because uh, it will not take you very far if it was because of money. Uh, we have a very big uh, umbrella uh, that everyone is following through is giving back. Um, this, well, there's one campaign that, for example, we are now uh, following ever since last year. Uh, it's called Kummi. It's for our team. So every person who works in Huone has an option to adopt a child all over the world. 
of their wishes. So if you want to adopt a child from Africa or from China or whichever country that you choose, male or female, is okay, then the responsibility of our team member uh, is to actually correspond with the child, to encourage them, to send them pictures, to motivate them. Uh, but the company pay the monthly contribution for the child. And currently we support 10 children around the world. And we are only a team of 10, and we are already doing these baby steps of trying to give back. And last year, uh, with every single person who spent a big Riolu in, uh, in Huonet, we donate one euro. Uh, and this time we decide to give back to the local elderly. So we are going to spend a day with the elderly and then we'll bring something to them and so on. So this is, for example, something that I realized that has take very little um, money, big effort, but brings so much happiness. So that is, for example, things that encourages our team in a totally different way. You know, imagine in the middle of the work day and the postman came and and there's the letter of the of the child and then they have drawn their hand on the paper and then it just bring the team to tears and stuff like that and then they realize that this is happening because they work in Huana. And I also say to them that you know even if you leave Huana one day, take the child with you so that we can sponsor another. And uh, but I also say to the team that I can't continue to run Huana as a mumia, uh, mumia Papa place because otherwise you will be serving coffee for the next five years. So for them to grow with inside the company, the company needs to grow. And that's why I have to go. And they are not very happy about Mama leaving the nest. But uh, I say that I'm doing this for you guys, not for me. And uh, so now they also understand why I have to grow Huana is not just because that I want more millions in my in my pocket, which I don't. So I think not yet. <laughs> I I I I I think I have already ways how to spend the money. I I probably shouldn't even be saying this, but I force my uh, shareholders to sign a clause in the shareholder agreement that says five percent of our uh, profit go directly to charity. And they are not very happy about that, but they still had to sign it. <laughs> but, uh, but again, it's, seriously, if you are doing, doing uh, being an entrepreneur, it's very, very hard work. Uh, it, it's a lifestyle, really. And if you don't love it, then don't do it. And love it not because of the money. Money just comes as a secondary thing at the end. So just remember why you want to do it, then I think it will bring you very, very, very far. Wow. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, this yes. question. Two questions about Juana. Yeah. So you are talking about business events, yeah. but what if I would like to celebrate my friend's birthday party? Would that be possible? And then second, how full are you? Like how much in beforehand should I reserve the space? Ah, uh, we do also do private events. Uh, they are mainly in Friday and Saturday. That's why they don't collide with the with the business events. And because we have three sauna, as you saw there, <laughs> the one with the uh, so we have three sauna there, and that's why a lot of people come there for like Gisa Gatsomo and all kind of birthday parties and so on like that as well. And uh, you can book it even just today for tomorrow, but of course it's about our availability. We have an online reservation system in our uh, website, whatabet.fee. So there you can immediately see if a room is available and you can pre-book it immediately. <coughs> so it's like booking a hotel room. Just go there and check it out. Do you still have the karaoke thing going on? Yes, we do. We do. Actually, we, we have Sing Star, eh, not Sing Star, Sing On is from, is from the iPad. So then you, you should see last year when, you know, 12 big guiolu going on at the same time, you know, and, and next thing you know, you see like two companies who did not know each other. They are dancing Gangnam style in one room. <laughs> and, and God, how many times have I heard I go in at nine and <laughs> too many. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you have trainings. Uh, what, what are you looking for training? Uh, it depends. I have taken training as my personal assistant and also uh, as event coordinator. And because we do organize uh, over 100 events a month, 
So there's a lot actually to do. So it depends what is the study of the student, then we try to meet the objective. But if it's frankly something that we can't help with, then we will also say upfront. So it's basically about what, what we can give. And I don't want to take somebody when I don't have time for. Yeah. Uh, looking backward, how would your business plan work? <laughs> I, you know, you know what they say uh, that you never get. There's n there's no perfect time to have a child, you know. Everyone says that. Uh, there's no perfect time to become an entrepreneur. There, there's there can always be more money. There can always be a better time. There can always be another better economy and stuff like that. Well, I started in 2012. Worst economy ever. And in fact, right now, I still haven't got a taste of good economy, have you? So, <laughs> so the whole three years has been there. So I, I, I look back to my business plan. Actually, I am still quite proud of it because I think sometimes I have to do compromises because of lack of money, resources, and so on. That there are some things that was my, in my business plan that I, I think I was so smart three years ago. I, how could I think of that back then? But then because when you are doing and then you have to change all the time and then you have to make compromises, go left, right, and not the exact direction that you want to go. And sometimes checking back to your business plan is very, very useful. It reminds you day one what, what, what you were thinking. So actually do put together a, a good business plan and spend time on it. And well, when I say time, not five years, but spend some time on it. <laughs> yes. Why Singapore? I mean, why, 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 why Singapore as uh, your cho choice of the first big international e e expansion? Is it just because the, the proximity to your hometown of Malaysia, or would it be easier to expand to similar markets like Sweden and Germany? Yeah, what's the fun of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, yes, a lot of people ask why not go to Tallinn and go to Stockholm. You know, it's right there, and then you just copy, paste. Like I said, what's the fun of that? And on, on the other hand, going to Singapore is because the, the idea is already proven. And it's already a working business model. So why, why then you know, copy-paste like that? And going to Singapore then is testing against the business culture. Because Finnish people do have a certain way of, you know, in business culture, how you host events and what is your pattern and so on. So going to Singapore will be to learn against the business culture. And after that, then we will uh, come up with a service manual that is universal. Then just pick a country from between. I, I make it sound too easy, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> yes. Have we had any mentor helping you through the journey? Yes, definitely. I, in fact, the first guy who invested in me, he was my professor in school. So treat your professor very nice. <laughs> you never know. Uh, he, he's my entrepreneurial uh, teacher, and uh, he owns a restaurant chain in Helsinki. So he, he, at that time, when I decided to become an entrepreneur, he told me that I'll invest this X amount in your, in your company. Uh, if you lose it, I will not be angry at you. And that is the reason why when I saw that he believed in me, I started to believe in me. And he was one mentor, and Mika Makelainen has also now became uh, my mentor, but he's moving to Singapore. I'm not moving to Singapore. So uh, I, I have been all the time kind of like wondering that what is it that I lack? For example, internalization is something that I don't know. And also seeking investors, there's a lot of different investment proposals that you need to do. And uh, those things I also, is not my cup of tea. So then I just have to be very humble and go to people and then say that like, please, would you help me and so on. And that's why I have always kind of like keep a certain mentor that I, I just, you know, if you ask for example, Mika, I can sometimes just call and say, that, Mika, I'm so doomed. I don't know what to do with this. And then, then he just tell you what to do. And then, then you're like, OK, that's a sucky idea, but thanks anyway. And then, you know, um, uh, I think a lot of people think of business as too serious of a thing, but it's actually lifestyle, really. So you just have to be yourself. And then if you're humble enough, people will help you. And, and they are not you know, just building by hour. and. And you know, every piece of advice costs something. No, 
and mentor are the best. I told my mentor that I don't pay well. In fact, I pay nothing. In fact, you pay dinner when we go. <laughs> so it's a sucky deal, but they love it. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much.